The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to actor Patrick Fischler, whose breakthrough role was on Mad Men as the insult comic Jimmy Barrett. He's since had recurring roles on Lost, Weeds, Southland, and was in Dinner for Schmucks. Stick around. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, brought to you today by Amazon.com. When you visit MrMedia.com and click on any of the links to purchase books, music, movies, gift certificates, or anything else through our Amazon link, you support this free video podcast. Whenever you need something else from Amazon, please consider returning to MrMedia.com to order it. It doesn't cost you any extra, and we sure appreciate the support. And don't forget, MrMedia.com has more than 1,200 celebrity audio and video interviews archived on the site. That's hundreds upon hundreds of hours free entertainment. Subscribe for free on MrMedia.com, and you'll instantly get an email every time a new interview is posted. You can also watch and subscribe to the show on YouTube, Vimeo, Daily Motion, The Realm Network, and Frequency.com. And if you prefer to just listen, Mr. Media is also available for free on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Blueberry, TuneIn, Blog Talk Radio, Podfeed.net, and Player FM. You can subscribe to any of those services and never miss another episode. Finally, you can interact with Mr. Media Interviews on all kinds of social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and more. Friend or follow us, we'll friend or follow you back. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Mr. Media, of course, is recorded live before a studio audience of ambitious young actors in the new new media capital of the world and home of the second best team in baseball, St. Petersburg, Florida. Folks, the first time Jimmy Barrett appeared in a second season episode of AMC's Emmy-winning series, Mad Men, it was like a sock in the jaw. Who was this 1960s, 1950s, pardon me, 1950s potato chip shilling insult comedian? And why was he so rude all the time? And how dare he shake up ad man Don Draper's world? Every time Barrett played to crunchy perfection by actor Patrick Fischler, was in an episode, he turned the show upside down and inside out. So, of course, Draper slept with uh, Barrett's wife. And, of course, Barrett made a play for Betty Draper in return. Ah. Now, you must remember the scene between Fischler's Barrett and John Hamm's Draper from Mad Men. You know what I like about you? Nothing. But it's okay. You got me everything I wanted. What did you get? Bobby? Lots of people have had that. Excuse me? Please. I laugh at you. I go home at night, and I laugh at you. I don't know what you think happened. You. You want to step out? Fine. Go to a whore. You don't screw another man's wife. You're garbage. And you know it. Well, good night, you two. It's been a gas. (laughs) Patrick Fischler has been all over our televisions these last few years. He was a recurring character in everything from Lost, when some of the characters time traveled back to the 1970s, to Southland. And currently, you can see him as a hotel manager on Showtime's Pot Tea. Oh, that's a terrible pun, isn't it? Pot Tea sitcom Weeds. I'm embarrassed I wrote that. He's also currently appearing in TNT's Deep Blue and Fox's Lie to Me. And he was in episodes of many more great series that are big favorites in our house Pushing Daisies, Burn Notice, Star Trek Enterprise, and even one of The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. with Bruce Campbell. Now, Patrick is married to a beautiful rising actress, Lauren Bowles, who joined HBO's True Blood this season as a waitress and was a guest on this show just a few weeks ago. Uh, They're also new parents. 
And speaking of family, while I was naming all those other credentials, he even did an early episode of his sister-in-law, Julia Louis-Dreyfus' sitcom, The New Adventures of Old Christine. And Fischler is more than just an increasingly familiar face on TV. His film career extends from Mulholland Drive to this summer's hit Steve Carell comedy, Dinner for Schmucks. There, I got to say schmuck again. (laughs) In fact, he's just back from Pittsburgh, where he shot One for the Money with Catherine Hagel. Also in the can is Miss Nobody and a role in the Ayn Rand film adaptation of Atlas Shrugged. Patrick Fischler, the hardest working man in show business today, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you see me? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. But uh, Patrick, I have a message for you from Dan Hedaya. Okay. Yeah, he wants his career back. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. I don't know. He, he and I, I don't know. We're a little bit different, wouldn't you say? What is he, 30 years older than me? Uh, well, maybe. How old is he? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't everybody in Hollywood know each other? You must know. <laughs> I don't know. But was, was he the dad on Wonder Years? No, no. That was – no, no. That was um, – that was another guy. Uh, Hedaya is, I, I mean, I was going to ask you. I mean, it seemed to me that there's only one guy, there's only room in Hollywood for one guy with pronounced eyebrows at a time. You know, that's probably true, but maybe some of his have fallen out. So I guess I've taken the extra work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, now, look, I, I've got to jump right into this because you've done so many, uh, been on so many great shows and, and films that uh, picking and choosing is tough and time is limited. So I want to jump right into Mad Men, which is where yeah, I please. think you came to the attention of a lot of people, even though you had already been working for a long time. i got to ask you this, Patrick. Was, was Jimmy Barrett one of the best recurring characters ever? You know, actually, I'm going to go as far as to say it's the best recurring character ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was the best job I've ever had. And, I, and that takes nothing away from all the other jobs that I've done recently or I will do in the future, but I can tell you Mad Men was my favorite show when I got cast on it, still is my favorite show, and that character was unbelievable. Is there, is there any chance that we might find out what Jimmy is doing in 1965, 1966? You know, I think there is a chance. I'm not allowed to talk about anything, but um, I can tell you that you know, we hope so. We hope so. We hope that we get to visit him. You know, the show has a couple more years in it, and I know I would love to come back. And so that's all I can kind of throw out there. Uh, I have an even better idea. How about Jimmy gets his own 30 minute show? <laughs> there you go. Why aren't you running some of the networks, Bob? You know, I'd like to know the answer to that myself. What's the Honestly, deal, Hollywood? Come on. There's no justice. I can tell you that. There's absolutely no justice. But, uh, no, I, it was really – it was such an incredible experience. The writing, the acting, the character. I mean, all the actors on that show, I just I, – I really – I talk about it so fondly because I, I, I love it so much. And I loved playing such a bastard. And, you know, <laughs> it was a great time. Well, and, and I, can, really, I, I can say Bastard, I right? Bastard's an okay word. It seemed word. like it was really the first disruptive character on that, on that show. Because, I mean, when you came on the screen, everything changed. I mean, the calm demeanor, everything. Everything was thrown out the window. I, I, I would agree with that. I think you, we hadn't seen something like him on the show at that point. Because it, it was pretty early in the second season. Uh, and, you know, the first season was so sort of calm. There wasn't a lot of, you know, action going on. I think... Jimmy came in and really messed things up and really was the beginning of the end of the marriage between Don and Betty. And I remember when I shot it and I couldn't talk about it and I'd come home to Lauren and I'd say, you have no idea what I'm doing to this relationship. You know, I, 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 I was so excited to be such a big part of it. And I think that really was the beginning of the end of Betty and Don. Was Lauren concerned that you took such great pleasure in breaking up a relationship, even a fictional one? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you ever concerned when you get cast in a role like that as you said i mean it's a huge bastard uh are you ever concerned that you know maybe people see that in you that it's not just they're not looking at you to act they're looking at you because that's the way they might see you you know i'm not concerned about it business wise but i will say when i would walk down the street when when that you know season was airing and afterwards for about months and even still now because people watch it on dvd and i uh, people come up to me and say, God, you were horrible or you're such a jerk or 
they confuse me sometimes with the character I played. And on top of it, I'd have to say to them, well, hold on, he slept with my wife. So let's, let's look at who the jerk was. I didn't do anything until he did. But of course, you know, it's Don Draper and he gets away with everything. So, uh, you know, it really, you know, I, I think most people can separate character and actor, I hope. And of course, uh, Jimmy was always immaculately dressed. With you know, when, whenever we'd see him, and, and of course, you look great this evening. Tell me though, speaking of looking great, uh, besides the scenes you did with John Hamm, you you did a, a number of scenes with January Jones, Betty Draper. Um, yeah. You know, let us in on her. She's gotten kind of a rough year uh, from the press. Uh, what was she like? I got to tell you, I, I had a blast with her. I think she's really fantastic. She's a Really sweet. I think if she gets a bad rap, maybe she's shy, so she's a little quiet, but that's it. I mean, you know, she's a really kind, sweet woman, and, and I liked working with her a lot and has found the part of a lifetime. She is incredibly good in this, in this role and I think isn't getting quite as honored as she should because talk about an unlikable character and yet you still, you know, there's something about her. But she's a very sweet lady. I really, really enjoyed working with her a lot. Mm. Um, that was early enough in the show that a lot of things hadn't been, you know, set in stone. Uh, as as mm-hmm. they, so, you know, now they're into what they're, they're finishing their fourth season. Uh, things yeah. are a little more firm. Uh, I, I would guess it was a little easier to come in then than it might be now as a fresh character and you know, kind of rock the boat. Probably, I'd say that's maybe maybe a little bit true. But it's still the kind of show I, I can just tell you. Everyone was incredibly welcoming. They, you know, because they're on AMC, they get a lot of accolades, you know, and the Emmys and all of that. But it's not like a lot of viewers. It's, it's a little different, you know. So I think they don't, I don't know, they're really, they're a pretty mellow group. I still see them at, we, Lauren and I went to a bunch of award stuff, a bunch of Emmy stuff this year. And I saw everybody and they're all exactly the same. I mean, you know, two years later, they're all humble and excited to be part of this incredible show. So I think it may be a little bit harder, but not much. Hmm. Well, uh, let's take a quick break. I want to come back and talk to you about so many other things that you're involved in. Uh, This is Bob Andelman, and you're listening or watching the Mr. Media interview with actor Patrick Fischler, a star of everything from Mad Men and Lost to Dinner for Schmucks and the upcoming adaptation of Atlas Shrugged. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media interview with actor Patrick Fischler, a star of everything from Mad Men and Lost to Dinner for Schmucks and the upcoming adaptation of Atlas Shrugged. Uh, Patrick, uh, we talked earlier about Mad Men. I wanted to change gears a little bit and go to uh, Lost. You were, uh, you were uh, pretty regular on that when uh, some of the characters traveled back to the early days of the Dharma Initiative. Uh, any, anything you can tell us from being on that set, being around that? I mean, that's, that's, a bit, that's now a piece of television history. It is. It was, uh, once again, this is uh, sort of random and weird, but Lost was my other favorite show beside Mad Men. So to uh, go to Hawaii, it was incredibly surreal to work on the show because anyone who's watching this or a- anyone who's a fan of it, my wife and I were as big of fans of it. And uh, so it was a little hard because Lauren was pregnant uh, at the time and I was there for six months back and forth. Mm. So, uh, but they were kind enough to reshoot, to move the uh, schedule a little bit so I could get back for the birth of Fia which was amazing. And um, it was an incredible experience. Those guys work their butts off. Uh, You go out into the beach, you know, from the city. It's about an hour and a half drive from Honolulu out to where they shoot a lot of the stuff. And, you know, you work about 18-hour days. uh, So it's a lot of work. So those guys really, really work hard. And they are an amazing group. I know I keep sort of saying that, but this group (laughs) was – you know, five years in when I did the show and really bonded with each other and uh, very welcoming. And uh, some of them were Mad Men fans, which was exciting. So I instantly, you know, was able to feel comfortable and it was great. I mean, you know, it was really, really, really fun. What about the legendary secrecy that those, those scripts were under? Did you have to deal with much of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, my name printed across all of them with a number. And I mean, it was, I'd get them delivered to the hotel very right before we'd start shooting, so very last minute. Um, but I mean, I was like, I, I, when I got the first one, I couldn't believe I had a lost script in my hand. And when I got cast, it was only one episode, so we didn't know if it would be more or not. It ended up being nine, which was great. Mm-hmm. But uh, they were very secretive, and rightfully so, and everyone would try to get answers out of me, and I didn't say a word, but uh, I had to deal with sort of the script stuff and, you know, 
all that. Uh, and I, ha- I have to ask you, uh, did you watch the finale and, you know, how did you feel about it? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was a sucker for it. I didn't need every question about every polar bear. or I didn't need all of those answered. What I wanted was what I got. I wanted like an emotionally – Patrick? Oh, okay. Just so folks, you know, uh, uh, Patrick's video has frozen on us, which means unfortunately Uh-oh. his audio is frozen as well. So, um, Uh-oh. uh oh, let's see what I can do. Hold on, Patrick? hold on. Can you hear okay. me? Yep, we got you. Am I back? All right. Yeah, you're all back. Thank you. Um, uh, where, actually, where did you lose me? <laughs> Sorry. Where was I? Oh. Uh, I don't know, but let me skip ahead. <laughs> oh well, you were you were talking about the finale, but I wanted to ask you also. Um, of the shows that you've worked on, and I think are pretty well known for, Mad Men Lost, uh, has one or the other or something else had a particularly large impact on your ability to, uh, you know, get increased pay from show to show? Good question. No. <laughs> no, really? No. It's, it's our business, Bob. It's a really uh, interesting business. I... Get, there's a when you guest star on a show, you get paid what's called top of show. If you you know, and that's what it's called on any kind of hour long. And I complain with Lauren all the time that I get paid, she gets paid the same as a guy who's just out of college, who's 22. I get paid the same thing I got paid you know 18 years ago when I started doing this. So you can there are actors out there that can get more for these guest spots, but it's it's really difficult. Mm. So I'm, that's, I'm, that's, my, I'm, I'm, that's my honest that's my honest answer. Oh, I'm shocked and sorry to hear that. Well, let me ask you this: uh, Does that does that go for like when you're doing weeds? The same thing? It's it's still f- pretty much flat that way. Flat, flat. Unless you're a regular, unless you're a series regular on a show, or you're a little more famous than me, and your agent can work it. You know, you just get paid the the this what's called the SAG rule top of show. You know, that's just the way it is, you know, but I I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about it because it's, you know, it's a a good amount of money. It just, it gets a little frustrating when you sort of do 25 episodes of shows and, you know, you're still getting paid, you know, I mean, I've done even more. I mean, you can look at my resume. I mean, I've been doing TV since I was 24 and, um, you know, what, you know, what can you do about it? So, well, I think that that leads me to the next question. What do you want to do? I mean, would you like to see someone build a series around you? Would that be a, a, good, a good thing at this point? You know, I don't even need them to do that necessarily. I just, I'd love to become a regular on a show I really like a lot. I don't need to just be a regular on any show. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, of course, I would love the idea of some right, amazing writer, you know, thinking I'm great enough to create a piece about but honestly, I, I auditioned for regulars on lots of, you know, great shows out there. It's just, it's a little, you know, it's hard. But I, I'll, take, I'll take a regular gig. That's sort of what I'm hoping for at this point, you know. But I'll, I'll say this one thing about not having a regular gig is I'm able to bounce around from show to show to movie to movie. Because when you're a regular, you're tied down and you're locked in and that's it. You know, so I get yeah. to do a lot of different stuff. Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about... Uh, uh Ty, what's what's the guy's name? Ty, he's on Modern Family. I'm sorry, I can't think of his. Ty, uh, Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell. Uh, there's a guy who 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 I think was doing a lot of what you're doing. He was you 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 get to the point where you'd recognize him after a while because you'd see him in different places, and he finally landed in the right place for him. That I mean that 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 role captures who he is in terms of his TV persona and 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 his ability. And maybe we just need to find the right thing for you along that line. Well, absolutely, and those guys, actually, he had done a sitcom with them before that didn't do very well. I forgot. It was about was the uh, Kel- family Kelsey of, Grammer? of shrinks. What's that? Oh. He was on the Kelsey Grammer show, too, I think. Uh, oh, he was on that. Years. See, so he, that was the one they did. They did that with him, yeah. the Kelsey Grammer show. And so he, um, he'd done that, and they knew him, and I think they really wrote this character around his strengths. So that is a great thing, and it's an amazing show. And, you know, mm-hmm. if they want me to play his younger brother... Because he's got those eyebrows. We're done. We're in. 
See, I didn't have to say. I said that Dan Hedaya wanted his career back because you know Ty Burrell is got is he's stationary. So I mean, you're getting all those uh, eyebrow rolls. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> hey, how how many episodes of Weeds have you done or are you doing? Hey, you know, actually, because of other commitments, that was just it. That was it. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh. That was that, that's what's hard though when they don't if people don't buy you you yeah. get other jobs. And then, so if they need you to come back, that's the hard part about a lot of the recurring stuff. Unless they sort of grab you, you're moved on. And I uh, started doing two different movies right after I did Weeds. Wow. Um, and you, we're going to run out of time it's soon, funny. but I, I got to ask you. Hmm? Oh, no, I, I have to ask you about uh, One for the Money with Catherine Hagel and uh, Atlas Shrugged. Two completely different movies, I'm guessing. Incredibly different. I, I can't speak much about Atlas Shrugged. Uh, I can tell you uh, it was a good experience, but uh, I, I never, I never read the book. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but I, I didn't. I got cast. I didn't have time to read a thousand pages. Um, it was, it's part one. They're hoping to make three parts because it's such a long book. And then one for the money. I just got back uh, about four days ago, and uh, that was an incredible experience. And. They're hoping this is the first in a series of movies because the woman who wrote it, Janet Ivanovich, has written 16 books. Wow. Well, that would be great. Um, yeah. I, I knew this was going to happen. We, I, we're just getting warmed up. I should have you here for multiple episodes. Um, folks, listen, you can, uh, you can see actor Patrick Fischler. Uh, he, he's, he's been in and out now of Weeds. I was going to tell you to go watch him on Weeds, but uh, he's also Dinner for Schmucks, still playing locally, I'm sure. And watch for him in the Catherine Hagel film, One for the Money, or watch out for Atlas Shrugged. Um, Patrick, uh, can people find you on uh, you know, Facebook or Twitter? Do you do any of that stuff? None of it. None of it, Bob. Not a, not a one. Good, good man. Probably better for you that way. Yeah, More free time is. for your wife and child. Exactly. Hey, listen, uh, thank you so much for being on Mr. Media today. Tell your lovely wife, Lauren, that Rudy and I both say hello. And yes, thanks so much uh, for being with us. Apparently, she's leaving me for Rudy, so he and I are going to talk about that later. <laughs> All right. Hey, take care of yourself, and thanks for being with us. Thank you, guys. All right. And, folks, for more original interviews with your favorite actors and actresses, uh, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. And please take advantage of this great offer for Mr. Media radio listeners. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash mrmedia for your free audiobook. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com. And you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter, twitter.com slash Andelman, or search Mr. Media Interviews on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you sharing your day with Mr. Media. See you guys. Thanks for listening or watching. Hi, this is Buzz Burbank in the Buzz Burbank Newsroom, preparing for you another Buzz Burbank News and Comment. Do you like good stories? Boy, I sure do. I turn over a lot of stones each day to make sure I don't miss the best ones. Sure, some make me angry, and some make me sad, and some make me laugh, and isn't that what makes us human? I'm proud of the fact that I pack more news into my 10 or 15 minutes a day than the evening news does in a half hour. It's a free podcast at buzzburbank.com, or you can subscribe free at iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or get it on any RSS device. It's like a newspaper for your head. It's Buzz Burbank News and Comment, another Realm Network presentation. Weekday mornings right here on the Realm Network. 
Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the George and Tony Entertainment Show. Prepare for awesome mediocrity. We're the Cousin Oliver of the Realm Network. I'm George. And I'm Tony. And we're a weekly family-friendly podcast about pop culture. From our point of view. At RealmNetwork.com. The George and Tony Entertainment Show. From the Realm Network. This is Snake. Do you read me, Otacon? Loud and clear, Snake. Did you listen to the latest episode of the Gaming Marathon on the Realm Network? Of course. They really know their stuff about gaming, especially that Asid guy. Yeah, but that Chirac guy is a real jerk. I don't like him. Regardless, the reviews are spot on and they tell it like it is. That's for sure. What happened, Snake? Were you spotted? Nah, it's just Lil Melser crying about the O's again. Ah, uh, whew. Close call. I better continue the search for Metal Gear, but keep listening to the gaming marathon each week. You got it, Snake. New every Monday afternoon right here on the Realm Network. It's the Mark and Lowell Show. Hi, this is Mark. And this is Lowell. And if you're fans of Don and Mike, you may know who we are. Our number one interns. You, you've met them on the show. They're the guys that ate all the junk. And they were outside with each other holding hands with a sign that said that they loved each other wearing the dunce caps. And what you may not know is that we started out as fans back in their WABA days. Hi, Don and Mike. It's Mark and Lowell. Oh, yeah. These are two guys that uh, well, we once actually called them our protégés, didn't we? And now we have our own show, so we want you to give it a shot. Yeah. Just check us out at the Realm Network, realmnetwork.com, or you can go to markandlowell.com. Resistance is futile. It's the Mark and Lowell Show. Every Tuesday and Thursday evenings right here on the Realm Network. And catch the Poor Premium Show Friday nights.